All right, well, welcome to Bankless DAO Seshbot tutorial. Um, is the, the, if you use the Seshbot poll, like in Discord, um, you really don't get the ability to put all the information that you need um, into a poll or into an event. Um, and so I just like using the web interface it's way easier and you can actually you know do different types of polls and different types you know of events um, probably one of the biggest complaints from new people is that a lot of the events don't really tell you where the event is happening in the discord um, the, oh actually you want the dashboard you don't want to do it manually <laughs> if you go to the dashboard um, you'll notice that all the different um, discords that you have because um, you connect Seshbot to Discord are listed and you can essentially create an event or you can create a poll and we're gonna create an event for a research guild office hours it's so nice thank you for doing that yeah, I know this is super easy. So we got. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was this not easy. And there's... is it available for guest pass? Yes, because I'm a guest pass. So. Oh yeah, for that. And I contest that the hardest thing to do in a DAO is actually get people to show up at the same place at the same time. And sometimes mm -hmm. lettuce meat works. Like you really have to have the net the day or two figured out before let it, let us meet kind of works um but so to the and organizing people requires the setting up an event for people to show up at to get organized so and there's nobody here necessarily trying to tell people how to organize it's up to everybody individually or as a group to propose how to organize or how to you know propose that some bank gets used to help organize people around you know around something and so you're either so i think yeah creating an event is actually and polls um help you organize people and help you get feedback from other people so that you can develop your ideas and bring them into proposals and then direct action. So we got some research office hours and we'll put guild and mm -hmm. the start time is going to be next Monday and um what time utc did you say um i think it was it was 3 p.m 3 p.m so one hour before office hours with marble so 3 p.m <laughs> There's a standard time That's called Mountain Standard Time. Okay. Eight. Okay, so I think. Is it 8 a.m.? Uh, I think it's 7 a.m. for me. I just got. You are in uh, Pacific. No, not Pacific. Um... Mountain. Yeah, it's so it's at 8 a.m. Mountain. So I just need to 
right. do 7 a.m. my time. Mm -hmm. And so the, the only thing you have to make sure that you get right is this channel. And this is where you set like the channel that the uh, event will be held. Um, okay. And so we have essentially so... ask a mentor is where the office hours are. And you can actually hold um, office hours, you know, in the guild area, but um, I think this is just where the, they're trying to have that space. Um, the duration you set is usually like an hour. Um, dimensions, um, you know, you can tag people with roles with events. So like, you know, um, you can write a description. Um, you know, the researchers and learn about opportunities in the research guild or other areas of the DAO. And research guild work groups and develop your research talents. And so, if this ends up being a good time for you, Sanad, um, then what I'll do in a couple weeks is actually delete. Um, I'll only, let's see, where is it, to, 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 on the repeat. Oh, wait, 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 uh, this is more a uh, research guild, right? Yep. And so we're going to repeat this uh... session three times. And then in essentially in three weeks, if this is a good time for you, Sanad, you'll come in here and you'll create your own event so that you can, you know, manage the description. If you ever need to cancel it and reschedule it or adjust the time, you'll be able to do so. Um, but this channel part is the only thing that once you create it, you can't go back and edit. Uh, so if you accidentally leave it on the default verification channel, or if it accidentally like reverts back to it, you got to like delete the event and then or update the description with uh you know where it's actually at and you can even got in the it. description yes. you know say join ask a mentor voice channel use ask uh Enter text channel. Boom. Um, if, if you find an image, you can put a link to that image. Um, I always just add the same color to every event that I create. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just fun to do. Um, it's not a private event, so you don't need to hide event attendees. But you could see how like ombuds could, you know, use Seshbot of that and then they could maybe, you know, it would just be kind of like a private event where they could still use Seshbot, but it wouldn't expose people that might be talking about a particular issue, right? But usually not usually can't think of any reason to hide event attendees. RSVP options are cool. Um Especially, you know, in Research Guild, I'd, I'd like to try to find a budget so that we could actually um, uh, give people bank for RSVPing and showing up. Um, 
but even knowing you know if maybe somebody is going to be there or um you know they're going to be there next time need a different time so somebody can respond that you know this is a bad time and then if you go back and check you know you can be like oh i'll just reach out to this person individually where the time didn't work well for them so i do like having multiple options and also in polls i always have at least three options which is approve no objection and then i object and because essentially any proposal that you want you want it to pass with no objection right you don't necessarily need everybody to approve it but you need everybody to agree to not object to what you're proposing um, and then that allows much more flexibility um, you can also identify um, so one of the things that research guild is going to have to do is we can create a researcher's role and then the people that are RSVPing to events we can add the role tag oh. okay so you need to be a level one or level two to add a role for the event but essentially we could add a researcher's role and then every time um, people responded to events it would let us know that they're active right and we would know if they're able to show up at the event if they might show up at the event um, and then every month we would just take everybody off of the role and then the very next time they RSVP'd to a meeting, you know, they would pick up the, the active researcher role. Um, the active, the guild tag role shows, you know, just doesn't show active membership. Um, and then that's your event. And you can set it to repeat weekly, monthly, daily. You can choose how many weeks or, yeah, so this is actually every, every one week and we want it to end one, two, three, we'll have the 31st as the last one. And so this will go on for four weeks. And then if it's a good time, Sanad, you can, you know, create your own event and then you can manage these things. And because this uh, channel, Ask a Mentor, is selected, it'll say down here in the bottom, create event in Ask a Mentor. And you can see a list of, of all the events and to do you can run a search and you can see uh, you can sort by by date you know and you can find all the events with office in it and then if you're the one that created the event you can come in here and you can edit the event And then when you go back into Discord and do do do, you check out the calendar. You can click the uh, the clock icon to get a DM from Seshbot, and then we should right. see. See, it doesn't show next. Okay, right here. See, so January 17th, Research Guild office hours. 
an hour before um, Marvel. And if we click on it, it'll take us right to the Ask a Mentor channel. And it'll have the description of the event. And you can sign up to it. Okay, and can you give me like permission or something like this for this um, event so I can edit it? Or do I have to reach out to you if it's any, uh, if I do have to change something? Yeah, so since I created this, you can't edit it. So essentially, it. as soon as you're ready to, you know, like I can go in and just delete this and then you can recreate the event. And then when you, you know, it'll have your name down here on the bottom, created by. And if you click on pencil, then Seshbot will send you another DM and you'll get a link to edit the event. Or you can just at that time, you know, at any time you can go into the Seshbot um, All right, got it. For events, I just like having, you know, you want people to be able to reply so you know who's showing up. Um, you want, you know, people to be able to say maybe. Um, and then I always just add, you know, okay, this person's, you know, next time. Um, and... I like to know if, if people would prefer a different time, right? Because if I just have, you know, one person every week replying that they need a different time, I can just like reach out to that person individually, right? But if I have four, you know, five or six people that are reacting with a need a different time, then I can actually schedule another work group. For the poll options, you know, so you got you got a proposal to do something. Now, most people are used to like I propose, I make a you know, I make a motion to do something, then somebody else agrees, hey, you know, I second that motion. I think we should move to do it. And then somebody drafts up a proposal to do something. And then people are usually like approve or reject, right? And there's a lot of other options that are available other than just approving something or rejecting something. Um, and- Yeah, I think I got you. Right? And so, like, if you notice, or like, you know, a, a lot of the proposals in the DAO, um, I, I, I need more background, right, to feel comfortable, like, voting on them and understanding how a particular proposal might affect the DAO. Um, and so, despite having 300 people in coordinate, you know, we never, hardly ever get anywhere near even like a hundred votes for something. Um, and most, and, and that's like snapshot and forum, like DAO proposals, you know, guilds by and large use Seshbot polls, you know, in, in the guild. And Seshbot polls really just yeah. allow for like one kind of strategy um, because it's just like a majority rules voting system <laughs> which which is which is an interesting thing to be the norm um, in a DAO um, but so there's a couple so in addition to approving something like I don't need people's approval to do something. I just need people to agree to not object to what I'm doing, right? As, and as long as it's safe 
and thoughtful and in the mission, you know, just about anybody should be able to read a proposal and be like, yeah, I understand it, I approve it, or I don't understand it, or I abstain, or I don't want to have anything to do with it, but it's safe. It sounds like those people are going to have fun, so, you know, I'm, I'm not going to object to it. You know, so no objections. Is, but always... is then the term no objection an equivalent to approve? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's more like a abstain. Mm -hmm. And it's essentially an approval. Okay. Okay. Right? Now I, li I like that approach. Yeah. And, and the reason why is because like, and this also gives you greater clarity because if nobody approves it, but ever, nobody objects to it, you're probably not going to find much support in carrying out your proposal. And, you know, it may not need much support. You know, you may not need like a bunch of people working on something together, right? It could be a very small group thing that two people can do. It doesn't need a bunch of people. But having like, I approve, um, no objections, um, I need, or I have, when you're getting a temperature check, you know, before like a, an official vote, um, I have questions before I can vote, you know, and then you would have like, objection and you can even have you know objection see comments right and then you could have strong objection so in a temperature check right this gives you much more information on where people stand um, whether or not you have support you know, like labor support if you need it. Um, and then even refining the objection, you know, this gives you the ability to, you know, seek other people's comments and then resolve them and move them, you know, to I have questions or no objection or maybe even approve once they understand it. Got it. Cool. Yeah, and then and then the only other thing is, um, you know, especially on temperature checks, you may want people to to add an option to the poll, right? Um, but it, if your proposal, you know, is going to governance, and this is like, all right, we're voting on it, we're either going to do it or we're not, um, or we're going to work on it more then you don't want other people to add poll options, right? You would just have approve, no objection, strong objection, and then you, you wouldn't allow anybody to add a poll option. And then you would only, you would require a single vote per user. <clears throat> and now the question becomes, what if, so like we're going to have in um, Research Guild, um, you're going to have more than one person running for uh, a particular election. <clears throat> and so the question is, do you stay with the majority rules? Or do you create <clears throat> your own, like, ranked choice um, poll? So everybody should see the mascot election on the screen. Yes. All right. So if you have three different mascots running for one election, you know and it's majority rule and you only have you have less than a dozen people voting 
you know, you could have four votes for each candidate and you, you essentially have a tie. And, and, and there's no way to guarantee you that you're going to resolve the tie. So with ranked choice voting, um, you can determine, you know, essentially you have two, two rounds and you vote for who you want, you know, first, second, and third place for each round. And then it essentially decides, you know, how people voted and you end up with a winner after the second round. Um, and then so ranked choice voting is just one of the um, options to a, a majority rule type of voting system. And I'll go on a slight tangent here. So snapshot um, you can actually create proposals with um, different types of uh, strategies. So you can do ranked choice voting, you can do um, weighted voting, you know, there's like a dozen different types of, you know, like Gitcoin uses the uh, quadratic voting. Um, and then there's, so like when, when Bankless DAO has proposals that go to Snapshot, these are, see here, we have an active proposal. These are weighted by the amount of bank tokens you have so you can see the voting system here the voting system is weighted which means that it's not one person one vote it's one wallet one vote but your vote is stronger the more bank tokens you have when you vote and Currently, it only recognizes your tokens that are on the ETH mainnet. So if you have uh, tokens on Polygon um, or another network, you lose the weight that in voting that your bank gives you. But you don't need any amount of bank to write proposals or use the community forum to create proposals and find people to draft proposals. So... Um, so there's, there's over 150 different strategies and, you know, there's like a dozen or so different voting systems. Um, so that's an interesting sidetrack for how, All right. yeah. So, I think I got it. yep. Generally though, rank choice voting and you know just kind of uh well thought out polls um for temperature checks are, are just fine with seshbot you know because none of the guilds require you to have even any bank to vote on the polls in the guild right mm -hmm. like you may there may be some security measures for notions or discord or um being on a multi-sig but as far as like being able to contribute and participate in a guild you just need a guest pass you know you don't actually have to have any bank um 